Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to make something festive for winter. Today I'll show you how to make this lovely garland with poinsettias, holly, and pine branches. It's not made out of real flowers though, not even silk flowers, but paper. That's right, I said paper. Can you believe how realistic these look? Me either. And I can't wait to show you how you can make this beautiful bow for your holiday decor. So please pull up a chair here at my craft table and we'll get started. Aren't these paper floral garlands just the most amazing things? These flowers are so realistic that every time I see them, I do a double take. I mean, how do we do it? <laughs> well, the secret is to use crepe paper. The grain of the crepe paper really mimics the natural texture of poinsettias. And together with the holly and pine branches, it makes a gorgeous garland that will last all winter long. No dead plants or crispy dried up pine needles here. <laughs> now this project can be cut by hand, but today I'll show you how to make these using a Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine. But you can also use the original Cricut Maker. The key to cutting the crepe paper on a cutting machine is to use the rotary tool, which is only compatible with the Cricut Maker models. If you don't have a rotary tool, you can still make this faux garland using regular cardstock or paper. It just won't look quite as realistic as it does with the crepe paper. Or you can cut your crepe paper by hand. I'll be using these colors of crepe paper made by my friend Leah Griffith. Use any colors you like, of course. This crepe paper actually came all together in a pack just like this which takes the guesswork out of creating a nice cohesive color palette for your garland. I love these. Now I also recommend this pack because it's a bit sturdier and less likely to tear than whatever crepe paper you might find out there. This is the good stuff. This is easier to work with and it'll be more durable for next year in future years. You'll also need a purple strong grit machine mat, a brayer, and a spatula tool to help you remove the crepe paper from the mat after it's cut. And you'll also want some artificial berries for your holly as well. And 24 inch gauge floral wire and a measuring tape with wire cutters to create your stems. Now I'll use about seven feet of thick floral wire for the garland's base, but your length depends on how many flowers you make and how long you want your garland. Last but not least, you'll need some quality craft glue. I love this stuff, it's Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And you'll also want a good amount of green half inch wide floral tape to attach everything together and add those finishing touches. And because everyone learns differently, you can follow this video tutorial or the detailed written instructions on my blog post at jennifermaker.com 551. That's also where you'll find the full supply and tool list for this project. And it has photos of the steps, tips, plus links to find everything that you need here. So are you ready to get started? Let me show you where to get the files and we will begin. Step one, get my free garland designs. First, download my designs at jennifermaker.com slash 551. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download from my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top, then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 551 and click the link to download the designs. Inside the file you'll find designs for one 8 inch wide poinsettia, six leaves to make a 6 inch wide holly stem, and two rectangular pieces for a single 7 inch tall pine branch. Now you can cut the crepe paper by hand with the PDF patterns I've provided, but it is easier and faster to do it with a cutting machine like a Cricut, which is what I'll show you how to do in this video. I'm using a Cricut Maker 3, but you can also use an original Cricut Maker or another cutting machine that has a rotary blade function and works with SVG cut files. So to begin, unzip the file and upload the SVG to Cricut Design Space. If you're not sure how to do this, visit jennifermaker.com svgs. 
Step two, prepare your design. Here's how the SVG looks on my canvas in Cricut Design Space. Zoom out to see the whole design using the minus button. With the design selected, click the ungroup icon. See how the poinsettia bracts, these red shapes here, and the holly leaves are oriented diagonally on the canvas? This diagonal direction ensures that the grain of the crepe paper is running in the right direction when the pieces are cut for maximum realism. So be careful that you do not rotate them. You want to cut your pieces at this exact angle for the right effect. Now decide how many copies of each flower you'd like to make. Then duplicate them by selecting the layer and clicking the duplicate icon. I want my garland to be about six feet long, so I'll make five poinsettias with both red layers, six holly stems, and eight pine branches. And don't forget you'll need five sets of poinsettia stamens too. Now let's change some colors to match the crepe paper we're using. With one of the poinsettias selected, click the color swatch next to operation and choose a new color. I'll change two sets of the poinsettias to white and one of them to dark red. I'll change four sets of the pine needles to a different color green. Now I do not recommend that you resize these designs because crepe paper is finicky and we need the pieces to fit the material just so. Just trust me here. <laughs> we are now ready to cut. With the correct machine selected, click Make. Since the crepe paper is just under 10 inches tall in the orientation we need to cut it, click on each mat and make sure none of the pieces extends below the horizontal 10 inch mark. Note that these stamen pieces here are too far down on the mat. Does another mat this color have any room? It does. So go back to the other mat, select one of the stamen pieces. Click the three dots and choose move object. Now select the other green mat with stamens. And repeat this with the other stamens, just don't go past that horizontal 10 inch mark. And remember, do not rotate any of the pieces or your crepe paper grain won't run in the proper direction on your petals and leaves. Feel free to combine any other mats you can, like the pine needles. Then click back on the first mat again and click continue. Cutting. On the Make screen, click Browse All Materials. Crepe paper doesn't cut like regular paper or cardstock, and when I did my tests, the crepe paper setting didn't work very well either. But I make the mistake so you don't have to, and I found a setting that does work better. So search for medium fabrics like cotton. I had much better luck with this setting. So select medium fabrics and then click Done. Leave the pressure at default and select the Remember Material Settings box to apply the setting to the other mats. Reference your cuts in Cricut Design Space to make sure you use the right size material to accommodate each mat's pieces. Cut your material just a bit wider than the pieces on your first mat. Now making sure the grain of the crepe paper is running vertically on the mat like this. Place it on a clean and sticky purple strong grip machine mat. Be careful not to stretch the crepe paper as you're placing it on the mat though. Now use a brayer with firm pressure to fully and evenly adhere the crepe paper to the mat. If the edges of your paper aren't staying stuck to your mat, you can apply painter's tape to hold them down. Now load your rotary blade into clamp B. Load your machine mat into your Cricut and press the flashing button to start cutting. Now because crepe paper can be finicky, it's best to stay with your cutting machine while it cuts. If you notice any pieces lifting or tearing, be sure to pause the cut right away and refer to the written tutorial I have over at jennifermaker.com 551 for help. Now before you unload the mat, peel back a corner of the crepe paper to see if the cut went all the way through. If it didn't, stick that crepe paper back down and press the start button for another pass. When the pieces are fully cut, unload your mat and flip the mat over onto your work surface. 
Now gently roll the mat back. It's best to remove the pieces going with the grain to avoid stretching the crepe paper when you remove it. So look at the closest edge. If the lines run parallel to the edge, rotate the mat 90 degrees and make sure they're perpendicular instead. Now roll the mat back and you'll see that the grain is now horizontal. Use a spatula to help carefully lift it off the mat and scissors to cut away any little spots that might still be attached. Now prepare, load, and cut the rest of your pieces following the same methods, making sure not to stretch the crepe paper as you're removing it from your mat. And use that spatula tool to lift those delicate areas. Now as you remove pieces from the mat, organize them into separate stacks for each flower, holly stem, and pine branch. This will help you a lot. Step three, assemble your paper floral garland. Poinsettias. To make your first poinsettia stem, use the measuring tape and wire snips to cut an eight inch piece of floral wire. Now grab the two stamen pieces. Stretch the rounded tip of each piece horizontally to widen it. On the smaller stamen piece, apply glue to the first third of the bottom edge. If your crepe paper isn't the same color on both sides, add the glue to the side that you want to show. Wrap the glued stamen section around the wire's end. Continue adding more glue to the stamen piece, wrapping it around the wire as you go. After the entire small stamen piece is attached, add glue to the pretty side of the larger stamen piece and wrap it around the small one. To finish, cut a piece of floral tape about 8 inches long. Then give it a gentle stretch to activate the stickiness. Wrap that stretched floral tape around the bottom of the attached stamen pieces and onto the wire to secure them. Pull gently as you wrap to encourage the tape to stick to itself. Fluff the stamen pieces by separating them from each other and gently push all the tips outward. Now cut three 6-inch pieces and three 8-inch pieces of floral wire for the poinsettia's three small and three large bracts. Straighten out the wires if they were bent at all while being cut. Then find the six large bracked half pieces and the six smaller bracked half pieces. Match up the large bracked half pieces in pairs along their straight edges, then do the same with the small ones. Now you've got three large full bracts and three small ones. The paper grain for each full bract makes a V-shape like the veins of a real flower. Isn't that cool? Take one of the small bract pairs and apply a line of glue about 1 16th inch in from the straight edge of one half. Press a 6 inch wire piece into the glued area, starting about a half an inch below the pointed tip of the paper. Don't stretch the crepe paper and hold the wire in place to dry for about 15 seconds. Apply another line of glue on top of the attached wire section and at the very tip of the paper. Take the other bracked half and, starting from the bottom, begin adhering it to the glue, sandwiching the wire between the papers with about an eighth of an inch overlap. The tips will be uneven, but don't worry about that for now. Set the assembled bract aside to dry completely. Repeat these steps to attach the rest of your bracked half pairs, making sure to attach the 6-inch wire pieces to the small bracts and the 8-inch wire pieces to the large bracts. Once they're dry, cut the bracts overlap tips to make perfect points at the tops. Holding the bract at the base of the paper, use your hands to gently curve the wire down to create a slight arch from the base of the bract to the tip. They already look really pretty, don't they? Let's make them look even more natural. Pinch a section of one bract's outer edge between your thumbs and forefingers. Pull one outward against the grain to make a gentle wave in the paper. Repeat this technique with each of the bracts. When finished, your bracts should look similar to mine. 
Cut two pieces of floral tape about eight inches long and stretch them to activate the adhesive. Set them aside for a moment. Arrange the wires on the three small bracts around the stamen's wire stem, aligning the bracts' bases with the top of the floral tape on the stamen. Take one piece of cut floral tape and wrap it around the stems of the three bracts to secure them to the longer stem. Then use the other piece of floral tape to attach the three large bracts to the stem just below the small bracts. Bend and arrange the attached bracts so they're evenly spaced around the center of the stamen. And there you go, your first poinsettia is complete. Now you know how to make the rest too. Holly Stems Cut three pieces of floral wire approximately five and a quarter inches long for the leaf stems. Straighten out the wires as best you can. Find six of the holly leaf half pieces and pair them up. The paper grain for each full leaf makes a V shape, just like with the poinsettia. Take one pair and apply a line of glue to the entire straight edge of one half, about one sixteenth inch from the edge. Position a wire piece about a half of an inch below the pointed tip and press it into the glue to dry. Be careful not to stretch the crepe paper. Apply another line of glue on top of the wire and up to the tip of the leaf. Starting at the bottom, take the other leaf half and press it on the glue to sandwich the wire with about an eighth of an inch overlap. Then set the leaf aside to dry. Repeat these steps to make the other two holly leaves needed for one bunch. When they're fully dry, cut the overlapped areas at the tips to make a perfect point at the top. Holding the base of the paper, gently curve the wire down to create a slight arch in the leaf. Your three holly leaves should look similar to mine. Cut a piece of floral tape approximately four inches long and then stretch it to make it sticky. Grab three holly berries and wrap their wire stems together with the tape. Cut another piece of floral tape about eight inches long and stretch it. Arrange the three assembled leaves around the berries so each stem is in between the two berries. The base of each leaf should meet the bottoms of the berries. Then use the other piece of floral tape and wrap it around the stems your first holly bunch is now complete. Follow the same steps to make the others. Pine branches. Now let's make a pine branch. Cut a piece of floral wire about eight inches long. Grab one of the pine needle pieces and apply a couple inches of glue at one end of the straight bottom edge. Try not to get any glue on the top with the pine needle strips. Begin wrapping the glued end around the top of the floral wire, pulling the strip of paper slightly downward as you wrap. Continue adding glue in small sections as you wrap. Keep gradually wrapping down the wire until you reach the end of the paper. It's totally okay if you stretch the paper as you wrap. It's also okay if you get glue on the outside. It will dry clear and it won't be noticeable after you fluff the needles. If you would like a longer or fuller pine branch, you can attach a second pine needle piece over it in the same color. Leave about two inches of the wire exposed at the base of the branch. Finish making the rest of your other pine branches. When your pine needles are dry, you can fluff the needles by pulling each one outward and downward away from the stem. And now you have pine branches for your garland. Assemble your garland. With all my flowers lined up, they'll make about six feet of garland. Here's how we do it. Using your wire cutters, cut the thick brown floral wire about a foot longer than your intended garland length. Since my garland will be about six feet long, I'll cut seven feet of wire for my base. Loop the wire over at each end by about two to three inches, then wrap the ends of the loops around the wire base a few times to secure them. Arrange your poinsettias evenly across the length of the wire base. 
I spaced mine about 11 inches apart to leave room for the holly and the pine branches. Place the pine branches and the holly bunches where you'd like them, in between the attached poinsettias and at the ends of the garland. When you're happy with the placement of everything, wrap the poinsettia flower stems tightly around the garland base, leaving about two inches of stem loose at the base of each flower. Now wrap the holly bunches and the pine branches around the garland wire, all the way up to their bases. Cut several pieces of floral tape, roughly 8 inches long. Stretch one out to activate the adhesive. Starting at one end of the garland, wrap the tape around the entire garland wire base to secure everything and hide the wrap stems. Keep going, stretching and wrapping the tape to cover the entire garland. Step 4. Show it off. Here is our finished paper floral garland. I just love how real it looks, and it is so different from anything that you can buy in a store. And there are so many ways to use these wintertime crepe paper flowers too. Display them on a mantle, or drape it over a railing, or wrap it around your Christmas tree. Didn't these turn out so incredible? The crepe paper texture makes them look so realistic. And what's extra cool is that these will never die. <laughs> and if you store them carefully in a low humidity environment, they should last at least a few seasons, if not many more. And there are so many different ways that you can use and display them too. You can put them on your Christmas tree as I did here. You could have them on your mantle. Or wouldn't these look beautiful on a holiday table as a centerpiece? You can even make some separate poinsettias as I did here, some holly stems or pine branches to add to other projects like my holiday sign. There are really so many possibilities. You can even wrap fairy lights around the garland to give it some sparkle. How fun is that? And I have other decor projects in my annual countdown to Christmas, the Merry Maker Mingle. Sign up free at merrymakermingle.com for free projects, tutorials, designs, and all the details you need to craft a beautiful holiday this year. Now, if you have any questions about making crepe paper flowers or using your Cricut machine or anything else Cricut or craft related that you think I could help you with, let me know. You can leave your question right below this video or ask over at our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And please come share photos of your beautiful winter floral garlands. Posting pictures lets you show off your beautiful work, plus it inspires others to create, motivates them to want to try it too. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.